SETI at Home was officially launched on May 17, 1999, which makes it 25 years old this week. So, happy birthday, SETI! <laughs> Call SETI stands for Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence, which was a very successful proof of concept for volunteer computing using PCs from people around the world. The project was conceived by computer scientist David Getty, along with others, as an effort to detect evidence of civilizations that might exist elsewhere in our galaxy or beyond. It's said there could be billions of locations out there where intelligent life might exist. The source data for the project came from the Arecibo Telescope in Puerto Rico. The idea was that intelligent life might produce non-random waveforms as it uses technology to do various activities. So, there might be power spikes, or a radio source that changes its transmission power. Or, we might see, for example, three power spikes in a row, or other kinds of non-random pulses. Or, we might find autocorrelation that looks like a signal type of waveform. Things like that. But the challenge is, there's a lot of random noise out there in the universe. Plus, signals keep shifting over time, because everything is moving, including us. So, looking for this was going to require a lot of computing power. Basically, the project needed to do a massive amount of digital signal processing. And as you might guess, there's not a lot of venture capital funding out there set aside to look for life on other planets. That's when this idea was born. Maybe people at home could help out. Volunteer computing. Anyone could participate. Just download the free software. Here's what SETI at Home looked like on launch day 25 years ago. It ran as a screensaver, or even continuously, while other work was being done. And results were transmitted automatically over the Internet. Basically, it was using computing power that would not have been used otherwise. What the SETI team was hoping for on launch day was to get maybe 50,000 or even 100,000 computers to participate, but it blew clean past that. In fact, SETI ended up with 5.2 million participants and logged over 2 million years of computing time across 233 countries, winning at recognition in the Guinness Book of World Records as the largest computation in history. By 2013, Chani-2 in China was said to be the world's fastest supercomputer. But by June of that same year, SETI at Home had a combined computing power that was 50 times greater than that. As you can see here, David Getty wrote on his LinkedIn page that at its peak, a half a million SETI at Home users were providing almost 100 teraflops of computation per second. Now, that's pretty interesting. So, for the rest of us, there were several outcomes for this effort. First, the project pioneered methods for efficiently splitting and distributing data across many nodes, processing the data, and then aggregating the result. Second, it set a nice precedent for using open source for grid computing, which continues to
to be a powerful idea today. And above all, the scale of adoption was a powerful validation of the potential for public participation in difficult scientific computing projects. In sum, SETI was completely successful in its second goal, which was to demonstrate the viability of volunteer computing. But what about its first goal, which was to find evidence of intelligent life out there? The official story is that no intelligent life has been confirmed in the 2% of the sky that they've worked on so far. But some of you might have seen this very interesting video that's out there on the internet, which apparently came from SETI. It sure looks like we got a signal there. Some people are asking who or what was creating this. <laughs> SETI headquarters has listed this area of the sky as not easily explained as random noise. The area is called radio source SHG B02 plus 14A. Okay guys, keep an eye on that one please, and let me know if anything moves in our direction. And beyond even this, some of you might have seen this guy on the internet as well. His online name is Professor Simon, and he says, The Italians have already discovered intelligent life in 18 different places out there, using math that's different from the Americans. Meanwhile, my father told me last week that he's still searching for intelligent life here on Earth, and he's hoping to find evidence of that someday. Okay, back to work, everyone. Thanks for watching and see you next time. <laughs>